Hello, my name is Brittany and welcome to Family Friday's Paint Night. A few words before we begin. Thank you for your continued interest and support for this workshop. You can expect a new video every third Friday of the month for the foreseeable future until we can resume classes in person at the Art and Spirituality Center. Speaking of which, there are other classes being held virtually if you are interested in taking any of those. I'll leave the link to our virtual calendar in the description box below. As a reminder, my class was made to promote bonding between family and friends. You do not need to be an artist to enjoy art. My art isn't perfect, so don't think yours needs to be either. To all those participating in this activity, I want you to try your best and don't worry about the outcome. My hope is for you to let go, get lost in the artistic process, and forget about what's currently happening in the world, even just for a little bit. One last thing before we begin. Feel free to pause, rewind, fast forward, mute, or do anything you need in order to follow along with this video. I normally take over three hours to complete a painting, even though my class runs about two and a half hours. For the sake of time and to make a short video, the clips you see of me painting are sped up significantly. Please, by all means, relax and take your time. I hope you enjoy. Let's get started. Here is what we will be painting for February of 2022. Disclaimer, this is my interpretation of the original artwork I found somewhere on the internet. I do not take credit for this concept and I wish I could find the original artist to give credit. Think of this as a study of the original artwork. In celebration of Valentine's Day earlier this month, here we have a lovely arrangement of orange, yellow, and peach flowers inside of a mason jar set in front of a gray background. Feel free to take artistic control, change the colors, make additions or adjustments, or change it up completely. The choice is yours. All right, let's talk about paint. We'll be using acrylic paint for this activity. You can use the fancier, more expensive paints if you want to. For this project, I'll be using paints you can find at your local craft store or even Walmart that are less than $1. We'll need a few colors. Peach, orange, yellow, lime green, sky blue, blue, white, gray, and brown. If you only have some of these colors, feel free to mix the colors. You don't need specific ones such as lime green, sky blue. You can just mix them with whatever colors you do have. We'll need a few brushes today. A large flat brush, a medium flat brush, a small flat brush, and a thin detail brush. Some other materials we will need. Something to put under the canvas or canvas board, such as a tablecloth or newspaper. You can also use a mat board or a foam board. My previous mat board became wet and warped, so it was time for a new one. You can easily find these reusable boards in any craft area. Of course, you need something to paint on. I personally will be using a canvas board, 12 by 16 specifically. You can also use an actual canvas of any size too. Then we have our paints. You'll need a plate to put the paint on. You can also use a palette if you have one. A water cup to clean your paint brushes. And lastly, a paper towel or an old towel. I'm using an old towel that I have used for other paintings as you can see here. Okay, order of operations, how this painting will go. First, we will do a nice washed out gray for the background. Then we will trace out the jar. We will do the sides, the bottom, and the top. Then we will sketch out where we want our stems and the center of our flowers to go. Next, we will pour out some greens and we will paint the grass. While we have that wet, we will do the stems of the flowers. After that is dry, we will paint the mason jar blue and then we will do the lettering on the front of the jar of the mason jar. It'll be ball. We're just doing that part. After that, we will finally paint all of the petals of the flowers, then all of the leaves that go with it, and do some little detailing on top. And then lastly, we will do all the little details of the background. All right, let us begin. First, I'm going to just pour out some gray and white paint. So the background of this, um, I'm just going off of the reference picture. It's basically a wash. So a wash just means um, 
you know, what does wash mean? Water. <laughs> so the background is not supposed to be a solid gray or a solid light gray. I'm going to be going back and forth with the white and the gray and also just uh, constantly dipping my brush in water. Just trying to make it look kind of as uh, see-through and streaky and watercolor as possible. So um, I'm just having fun with this. You can do different colors if you want to. You can make it solid if you want to. You could do a nice little ombre. It is completely up to you. So right now I am just doing a wash of the gray for my background. Okay, so off camera, I already went ahead and sketched out this mason jar, but this is how I did it. So about two, two and a half inches from the left and right side, I am going to make some vertical lines, uh, stopping about um, an inch from the bottom, and then I'm gonna do a little half circle for the bottom of the glass, and then just gonna curve it up from the top of the lid, and then it is up to you how many flowers that you want to put in here. I'm just going to do the stems and the centers of the flowers to go along with it. So now I am pouring out all of the different color greens that I want to use. I have so many different color greens that are already pre-made, but you can actually make so many more different colors of green based off of what other colors you have. So. If you have a lime green already, you can mix it with yellow, or you can even throw in that sky blue in there to make teal. You can put some gray in there, make more of an olive green. Um, you can do so many different things, and not every two stems are the same color. So that's not what I wanted to do here. So with my medium flat brush, or actually no, my small detail brush, I'm just gonna go ahead and start with the stems of the flowers. And I was, again, just going off of the reference picture. So the stems, I'm just basically gonna stop them uh, closer to the top of the mason jar. I'm not going all the way to the bottom just because the water and the mason, the ball, um, the lettering ball of the mason jar, I don't want it to compete too much with each other. So I'm just going to stop um, where you see it right here. So I'm just gonna go back and forth with my browns and my different color greens. And after these are dry, we will start painting the grass, the grass first after these. So stay tuned and don't let your green paint dry out.
All right, and next step before we start the mason jar is to do our grass. So with my medium flat brush, and I'm just using the skinny side of the brush, um, I'm going to be dipping into all of the different color greens that we previously mixed up for the stems. So I'm just going to get some paint, load up my brush, and use an upwards flicking motion to do the little uh, blades of the grass. And you can start with one color, mix it, uh, move it to a different color, go back, let it dry. Um, you can use as many layers as you want to or need to or none at all. It is completely up to you. I am just going from the sides and stopping um, at the mason jar. Um, I'm not going in front of the mason jar. I'm just going underneath. So it's like the mason jar is sitting in the grass. And then once that is nice and dry, we will move on to painting the mason jar blue. So this grass may take you a while. Um, don't get frustrated. Just take your time. If you need to let paint dry before you move on to a next layer so the colors don't blend together, that would also be a good idea. So take your time and I will check back in soon. Okay, now we are going to start the blue mason jar. So first I am starting off by pouring out some of my sky blue color and also my regular blue color. And I think I will pour out some fresh white if your white has dried up by this point. So first I am going to put a nice little uh, wash of the white color. I don't wanna make it too opaque, like a too much of a solid color glass is ideally supposed to be transparent, supposed to be clear. So I'm just going to do a nice little base coat of the white so that the sky blue color can be on that nicely and I won't have to do multiple layers of that. So even if you lose your lines here, like that bottom portion of the bottom of the glass, I might lose that. That's totally fine. I know where it is and I could just paint on top of that. So first go ahead and do a nice little light wash of white paint. Then we will uh, periodically move into adding in some of the sky blue color while this is still wet. All right, let's start painting the blue of the mason jar. So with my sky blue paint and my medium flat brush, again, I'm just going to make this a nice wash of the blue. So I'm gonna continuously dip into the water just to make it as watercolor as possible and not to lose the white that we just did. So a nice little thin layer of blue on top of the white that we just did. And don't forget to do the top of the mason jar, which is the twisty part of the lid. It is supposed to look streaky and uh, so you could see the brush strokes on it. So feel free to have some parts that are darker, some that are lighter. If you need to add the white back in there, you can also do that as well. All 
right, so now we're going to work on some of the last details of the mason jar. So with my blue color, just my darkest blue that I have, with my medium flat brush, now I'm going to outline the edges of the jar, and that's just to give um, some depth and shadow, like there is a curve to the glass. So I'm gonna do that to either side of the glass as well as the bottom, um, not forgetting that half circle that we did and not forgetting the little twisty part of the lid as well. So when it comes to the bottom, I am going to, with my small flat brush, uh, trace out that circle and then also dip in with some of the white and just do a nice little spiral in there. Uh, once we get to that but when you are on these edges I'm try I'm not trying to make it like a solid color like a solid outline I do want to have it uh, blend in a nice little shadow from that dark blue to the light blue so make sure that you do that so here just as I mentioned before I am outlining the bottom portion of the mason jar and just uh, keeping that line going with the half circle or the little oval shape right there and then just to make it look like it is the bottom once again, I'm gonna do a nice little couple of little swirls in there. And just to give it a little bit more color, I will dip in with the sky blue and also white. So once we have our mason jar painted blue to our liking, this may take you a while, but once you get it to your liking, then we will work on the lettering. Okay, so off camera, I went ahead and sketched out the writing of the cover of my mason jar, which is just simply saying ball, B-A-L-L -L in cursive. And on the reference picture, it does say mason and I think a couple of other different things, but I just didn't want to fiddle with so much different writing on there and to paint that all. And it just looks much cleaner and simpler just with four simple letters B-A-L-L. -L. So there really is no um, way that I can describe how to do this lettering. I was just going off of the reference picture and just mason jars in general. So a nice capital cursive B and then A-L-L -L in cursive all going on a upward slant to the top right hand corner. So first I am going to outline ball in white and then around some of the bends of the letters I am going to go in with my darker blue and my lighter blue just to give it a little bit more dimension that it is glass um, that it is raised glass with the lettering and all that stuff so this might require you to do multiple layers if you um, cover up some of the blue or some of the white with the blue you might have to go over with white again that is completely up to you I would recommend sketching the ball in pencil first or some kind of writing utensil first that you can erase rather than just going in with the paint um, right away. So feel free to sketch out ball, paint it with white, let that dry, do the two different blues and just go back and forth with it. So right now we are just working on that and then we will soon work on our petals of the flowers.
Alrighty, so now that the lettering is done, we can finally move over to one of the last steps, which is the flowers. So first I am going to start off by pouring out some orange paint and some yellow paint as well as peach. And if you don't have peach, that's totally fine. You can just make that by mixing um, some orange, some white, and probably some yellow, just to your liking. So with those four colors, orange, yellow, peach, and white, I am just going to start putting um, a base coat down of the flowers. So I'm just basically uh, painting and tracing out the shape of the flowers that I wanna do, how many petals, what the petals look like, etc. Um, I'm just trying to fill it up as much as possible. So some of the flowers are going to be yellow, um, probably about like three or four of them. Um, and just trying to even them out as much as possible given the amount of flowers that I have already pre-sketched out. So I'm going to start off with one color and just basically fill them in. So some of my petals are going to look different. Some of them are going to have um, five petals on them. Some are going to have four. Some are going to be small. Some are going to be big. You can do whatever you want with these. I really like the color palette that I used. It's kind of like a... Um, pastel orangey hue um, compared to just a, a bright blue bright orange bright pink etc you can do whatever colors you want you can do purples pinks greens surprise me <laughs> I would love to see the creations that you come up with and of course as always you can send them to our email you can post it on Instagram and tag us you can post it on Facebook and tag us we would absolutely love to see your artwork so right now I am just basically putting down my first layers of paint and then I will go over it and um, either add another layer or multiple colors just to give it a little bit more dimension possibly uh, do some outlines on the petals it is completely up to you so just have fun with this um, do whatever style flowers uh, whatever petals that you want to that's completely up to you so right now I am just going to be working on the petals then once those are dry I will do the centers but I think I'll catch up with you when we're about to do that so have fun I'll see you in a bit
Okay, so now right here is a good part um, to mention if you wanted to do anything special with the center of the flowers besides just that circle. Um, so right here, for example, I'm just doing a little star uh, just to give it a little bit more dimension that there is um, some other little elements that are coming out from the center. Um, and then you can also start adding in some other colors to this if you would like. So if you look closely at my flowers and even the reference picture that is in the calendar, um, all of these flowers do have some kind of color other than the original first layer that we did. And that is completely up to you at your own discretion uh, what you would like to add to this. And you could just make it a solid flower, you can outline it completely, you can just add a little bit of splash of color, that's completely up to you. Um, right now I am just randomly choosing some petals just to add a little bit more color and if I feel like there is too much color then I will just go ahead and blend that out, no big deal. And that is not the last thing that I do to these flowers. I do, um, once these are dry and once we paint the leaves, I do add a little bit more um, of some fun to these flowers, so stay tuned for that. Um, but also, um, after you do a couple of these layers of the flowers, um, the colors, then we will do the centers. And the centers, um, some of them have two different color centers, some of them have one. Uh, basically, I am just starting off with brown and or orange, like this one and I'm either getting my thin detail brush and doing the circles or I'm using the flip side of my paintbrush and dipping it in with a color and just making a circle like that. So right here, for example, um, I felt like there was too much orange, so I'm going ahead and blending it in. So that's completely up to you. You can do whatever you would like, whatever feels good for you. So right now we're just basically finishing up um, some of the colors of our flowers, blending it in, adding the centers, and then once that is done, we will work on the leaves.
All right, so now one of the very last steps that we're doing is adding the rest of the greenery. So my green paint should still be a little wet, but if it is dry, no big deal. I'm just gonna pour out some fresh colors and make some new shades of green. So the leaves are, you know, just your standard everyday leaf. Um, just think of it as either a, a water droplet or a tear droplet. Um, basically that has the oval shape with a little point at the end. So a little oval shape point at the end. This one is just curving a little bit. So that is um, the default of how I like to do my leaves. So um, right here, just aside from one solid color, I'm mixing it up. So I did a lighter green on one side and then I'm adding in some yellow. So basically in any empty spots that I feel could use something, I am just adding in some leaves. So you can never have enough leaves for flowers. <laughs> the more the merrier. And if you want, you can add some little curly cues in there as well. Just do whatever you want. So you can do um, different shapes of leaves as well, different colors. This one is brown. And if I feel it's a little too dark, I'm just gonna add in some green as well. See, I'm doing that right here. So um, some leaves, you can make it look uh, really circular. So like a series of circles. Um, you can do it like a piece is missing. Uh, you can do it one that's really pointy. It is completely up to you, whatever you like to do with your leaves and your greenery. So like this one, I'm just doing a bunch of little circles. Kind of looks like a little cloud, a little bit. <laughs> a long, elongated cloud, so it's completely up to you. So once we are done with our leaves, one of the very last things we are going to do is just add a couple little details not only to the leaves, but to the flower petals as well and the background. So first just work on um, this portion of the leaves and I'll check back in when we are ready.
Alright, so again, going off of the reference picture and just I felt like I wanted to add this. Um, with the opposite side of my paintbrush, I'm basically just going to add a little extra something, a little extra oomph <laughs> to uh, these petals. And by that, I just mean using the other side of my paintbrush that doesn't have any bristles and just dipping it into different colors and basically just putting it into areas where they'll really pop out. So on the green, I felt like yellow would really pop out and work uh, really well with that. Um, on the orange, I did some yellow. Oh, and here I'm also um, filling in some of the centers with a different color. Not all of them, but most of them. Um, let's see, with the white flowers, I can add in some peach. With the peach flowers, I can add in some, um, some white. So it's completely up to you. You don't have to do these little circles, but I just felt like it was fun and it just really matched um, the theme and just like how whimsical it is, the different colors that we went with, the way that I outlined it, um, the way that I outlined some of the flowers and the grass. So it's not supposed to be like super realistic or anything like that. Um, just have fun with these flowers. They are your own flowers. And then lastly, to the background, I'm just getting some watered down white paint and just doing these little dabs in there. Again, just to give it a little bit more style, a little bit more dimension, and also I felt like um, the space needed to be filled up just a little bit. The background being the gray color, the first thing that we did, I felt like was a little too smooth for my liking, so I just wanted to add some brush strokes in there. And you can do that if you want to, or you can um, not do that at all, it's completely up to you. But this is the very last step, then we will be done. Just kidding <laughs> I forgot to mention one last thing is to just add a little bit more color of the oranges and yellows into the painting so on the sides in the grass I'm just randomly adding in some yellow gonna add in some orange on the sides possibly to give the illusion that there are some more uh, flowers in the background that we picked and put into the mason jar and then also I'm going to put in those colors on the mason jar just a little bit just to possibly uh, give the look that it is a reflection of the petals on the glass that is up to you and if you want um, you can get some more watered down white paint and just do some very light dry brush strokes on the mason jar just to look like again it is glass it is a mason jar And that is it my friends. Good job if you made it this far and completed the painting. I'm happy with my finished product and I hope you are with yours too. If your painting looks different from mine, that is totally fine. If you followed along and completed the painting or went on a creative adventure of your own, please feel free to share your artwork with us. We'd love to see it. Email address can be found on the link in the description box below. As you know, I miss everyone and I really wish I were with my Family Friday class painting alongside them. I'm also happy to know that more people have had the chance and opportunity to do art safely at home and on their own time. I hope these videos bring you joy and you were able to relax and not worry about the current events of the world, even just for a little bit. Please stay safe, have a great rest of your weekend, and I'll see you next time.